Oh, hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. You know, uh, thanks for watching. If, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider hitting that subscribe button down there and click that bell for notifications if you want to know when I drop new videos. I've got some great live streaming content coming up this week talking about the crisis in the comic book industry. Uh, speaking of which, today on Comic Book News, we're going to talk about Diamond Comic Distributors. Yes, another bit of news in the ongoing saga of the distribution woes of the direct market. Uh, we're also going to dip into the back issue bins and take a look at two of my very favorite back issues of all times. We're talking about Art Adams' Summer Fun and Winter Fun Special featuring none other than Gumby. We're going to look at those in depth today on Comic Book News. Oh man, welcome to the Fortress of Solitude and yeah, uh, our first story today we're going to talk about Diamond Comic Distributors. Let's go over to Bleeding Cool and take a look. You know, I'm not the biggest fan of Bleeding Cool. I think they do a lot of sensationalistic stuff. They do a lot of garbage stuff. They do a lot of snarky stuff. But they're also like some of the most timely with uh, up-to-date uh, info coming out of the industry. So I give it up to you, Rich Johnston. So, uh, in the latest news in the ongoing saga, when last we left, Diamond had promised uh, to stop distributing comics. They weren't going to take any new comics. They're going to keep distributing stuff they've already got in the warehouse, but they're not going to take any new stuff in. And now they have promised the publishers, right? Diamond takes a lot of money from the in, for a lot of product from publishers, sells it to retailers, collects the money on terms, and pays the publisher back. Uh, on terms as well. Credit terms, meaning they have a certain amount of time to pay. They've got contracts. Obviously, these are different from publisher to publisher, but um, it, what looks like, for the most part, Diamond is saying, look, man, we know we owe you a lot of money, but we got no cash flow coming in. So what we're going to do is we're going to pay you 25% of what you would normally get this week. And then we're going to take that 75%, we're going to pay 25% of that. And we're going to keep paying 25% for a certain amount of time uh, until we get to the end and then we'll pay the rest off in weekly installments. So Steve Jeppy, the founder, chairman, and CEO of Jeppy Family Enterprises. He's also the owner of Diamond Comic Distributors. Two weeks ago, Diamond closed its doors to new comics as part of the gl current global situation. They also made redundancies, meaning they fired people. Last week, Diamond told publishers that they would cease payment for product received. This happened while Diamond simultaneously demanded payment from retailers, many of whom have also closed. Bleeding Cool hears about publishers that may have to close down entirely as a result. Today, Jeppy reached out to publishers to promise a schedule of payments. He writes, working with what we know today, below is the outline of vendor payments. And he goes on to say what I said about 25%, 25%, 25%. Now, not 25% like four payments and you're done, but like 25%, then 25% of what's remaining and 25% of what's remaining uh, for six weeks. And then the remaining amount due will be paid off in equal payments over a 13-week period. We understand this will have a significant impact on everyone. And the situation could change. We also recognize that our world is in the midst of an unprecedented crisis and aggressive action is necessary. In addition to the steps outlined above, our leadership team is accepting a 50% salary cut. Landlords have agreed to rent deferrals. Various other providers of professional services have agreed to defer their payments. Never before have we experienced such a test of our resolve and a demonstration of our commitment to each other. Now, more than ever, we need to come together in support of one another, knowing that these difficult decisions will allow us to emerge from this time and thrive once again. One publisher describes the current situation at Diamond to Bleeding Cool as their comics being held hostage. This is likely to be a step in the right direction for them, but at the moment, it's just a quarter step. Ah, I'm surprised there's no jokes here about uh, no quarter ask, none given, or something along those lines um anyway uh the bottom line is you know diamond is a a, a, a a kind of a like a weekly cash flow uh driven business much like the comic shops that it services so without that flow of money coming in they're gonna have a hard time paying the people they gotta pay the 50 percent salary cut to the leadership team well, that sounds impressive but i'm guessing those guys are getting paid a lot 
and I mean a lot, whereas a 50% salary cut is still going to put him in uh, the low six figures for sure. Um, anyway, I don't begrudge them that. They got to do what they got to do. But in times when uh, 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 their biggest customers, retailers, are, are, are going to be going out of business and are going out of business left and right, man, I sure hope um, they can come together and solve this one quickly. Now let's move on. Let's go into the back issue bins. Today we're going to talk about two of my very, very, very favorite single issue comics of all time. Okay, Gumby. What? Why would you want to read a Gumby comic? I mean, Gumby, what, he's fighting aliens? Gumby, Gumby in hell? This is going to be goofy and silly, right? Well, you're right, it is. Um, but it's also going to be two incredible comics. Um with art by the great Art Adams, who, if you don't know Art Adams, you know him from work from the Major Two, you know him from his independent stuff, he's done great stuff on X-Men, he's done his own book, Monkey Man and O'Brien, back in the 90s, uh, he's done so much work, on, on every major comic there's something, and continues to this day doing covers and all kinds of work, if you don't know Art Adams, um, you should. But you know what's more is each of these were written by two very, very funny comic writers. Um, the Summer Fun Special was written by none other than Bob Burden, the creator and writer of Flaming Carrot Comics. If you haven't read that, that's one that'll be coming up uh, in one of my throwback reviews coming up soon. Because as we're out of new comics, I'm delving into my bookshelf and back issue bins and I'm going to pull out my favorite stuff. You know, I'm going to pull out all the stops. Enough with the tepid new weekly stinky comics let's go back and pull out some of the stuff that i think mwah, are cream of the crop flaming carrot is one of those uh, another rare cut sam and max freelance police if you've heard of sam and max you might have heard of them from their video games they're all based on these comics by steve purcell these comics are hilarious super well drawn and i will be reviewing this on the show soon um, just know that it's wacky and absurd and super hilarious um, and is the perfect fit for these Gumby comics, right? So wait a minute, wait a second. Why are we talking about it when, you know what? We've got a million dollar comics, Cam. Let's check it out. Whoa, million dollar comics, Cam. Man, did these look great. Man, Gumby summer and winter fun specials. Um, what year did these, these puppies come out? Let me see here. Let me take a look on the inside and the indicia. Looks like 1988. And man, are these beauties. Let's take a look. I believe the Summer Fun Special was first. Yeah, 1987. July of 1987. These were put out by Kamiko. Full color. Beautiful full color comics. Look at this artwork. This is Art Adams just drawing stuff that he's passionate about. The story is super weird and bizarre. It goes all over the place. It's got robots. It's got aliens. It's got cowboys. It's got Indians. It's got uh, a lot of really fun stuff, but also some, some darkness. This is the one written by Bob Burden, so it's really bizarre. It's a lot less jokey. There's, there's some real dark humor with some of these characters. This guy starts off as kind of like almost a suicidal sad sack kind of character. That all changes. This is a kid-friendly book, but, you know, there's crazy stuff. Art Adams drawing werewolves. I remember I gave this book to my young niece, and this panel alone scared her away from this comic for many years. I gave it to her a little too young, maybe. But just look at this stuff. This is gorgeous. The, the expressions uh, on Gumby's face, the determination and drive, uh, the bears from outer space that arrive to help and they just encounter like crazy thing after crazy thing in this book um uh including uh going to tropical islands meeting up with pirates uh searching for treasure just all kinds of fun stuff for kids it's just such an innocent feeling and and reading book yet with this beautiful art adams artwork and and, and, and color that pops and is so vibrant and beautiful, especially considering the printing technology of the time. I've said this before in my review of uh, Kamiko books like uh, Elementals. I just feel like they were way ahead of their time in colored printing technology. 
and they put out some of my favorite looking books of that era. So, you know, we get lots of cool stuff. Pirates, Gumby looking tough, playing with the robots, and 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 ultimately ending up with a with a fun adventure um, suitable for all ages. But yet, that is going to knock your socks off with um, killer Art Adams artwork. And let's take a look at some of these little like backup pieces here. How about this? How about this drawing of Gumby and Pokey? on this dinosaur thing like just that picture alone beautiful um wrap around covers like a lot of komiko stuff like the first the cover by itself this half cover is okay it's cool looking it's great it grabs your attention but when you see the whole thing oh man i had a chance to buy the original artwork for this about 10 years ago it was like mounted on a foam core thing it was it was a few thousand dollars in hindsight i think it was a steal because I'll bet it would go for a lot more now. Maybe. I wish I had it. I wish I had a way to get it. If you've got it, contact me. I might buy it. That's the summer fun special. Let's look at take a look at the even wackier and goofier winter fun special. Now, as my, I do love the summer fun special, but I think maybe when I'm thinking about it, the winter fun special I like a little bit better. Again, we open up with a Art Adams drawn Gumby and dinosaurs, like Gumby and Pokey in like high adventure s settings. I just love it. I love this sort of like Gumby and Pokey in danger. Now, so this issue is is way more goofy, way more Christmas related. So uh, Gumby and Pokey visit the toy mines where the rough, unrefined toys are dug up from the ground before the rough edges are sanded off to be given to the kids. And there's a cave in uh, at the mine. So uh, Gumby and Pokey go back to get their digging machine that Gumby sent away for with uh, with box tops or something. Right? And and we get to see our Adams just show why he's a master. Because, you know, a cartoonist, a great cartoonist, isn't just going to draw this, be able to draw the same thing. Somebody like Art Adams can take something as ultra cartoony and unrealistic as Gumby but add in all this crazy machinery and and monsters and and amazing computers and and technology and just like a, a and and you know geology and and backgrounds and everything he pulls together all the pieces of cartooning I feel like this is his tour de force and especially if you look at other books from this era like his X-Men stuff, they're beautiful and everything, long shot, but the coloring was so bad back then that they do not hold up like this. This could come out today looking just like this, and I think it would be a modern hit. Now, this has been published and reprinted, but it only came out in this sort of digest-sized format, which is a shame because the artwork is so beautiful, it deserves to be seen at full size. I'm hoping someday it will. Uh, my buddy uh, Mel at uh, Wild Brain Studios put out that. And I'm hoping to have him on the show soon and we'll talk about Gumby. He's put out some other Gumby stuff as well that I love. None of which I loved as much as this. Now let's take a look at this as Gumby and Pokey go to hell. And this sort of like carnival scene. Look at the crowd scenes. It's hard to tell on the NDCC, but there is a buttload of detail going on in here that Adams draws. This is not dashed off. This is a labor of love. Look at that crazy clown roller coaster thing up there. Um, again, I'm maybe I'm gushing, but who's better than our Adams? I don't know. And then when you finally get to meet Santa Claus, who's in hell, and he and 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 he's getting saved by Gumby and the mole people, and it's Sean Connery. Well, that just puts it over the top. This is like, to me, this was like the same era as Time Bandits. A Sean Connery movie that I love, Terry Gilliam. So, like, this puts me right back into that era. Look at this Satan, right? Beautiful stuff. Kill, again, the coloring, evocative, uh, the, the, the character work, great, funny, detailed, beautiful, full of gags and jokes. So many great jokes um, that I'm just glossing over here. And then we'll end up with a nice uh, giant monster. What are those? Kaiju. 
uh, including, you know, our Adams is also known for doing loving and doing work on Godzilla comics. And here's just a little taste of what the guy could do. He's he's truly oh my god! And then a mecha, a, a giant Gumby mech to 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 fight the giant monsters. Come on, folks! If you're not digging this, then maybe you're watching the wrong show. I just want to say it. I don't know, man. If you can't read a comic this beautiful and goofy and just get filled with joy the way I do, I don't know. Maybe we like different kind of comics. That's okay. Again, another high action dino Gumby with di and Pokey with dinosaurs. Um, beautiful stuff. Uh, it, on the back of this one, it's not a wraparound cover this time, but we got these cut out paper dolls of like cave women and cavemen and Gumbies and dinosaurs. And how fun is that? And how great are these books? They're so great, guys. I love Gumby. I love Art Adams. I love uh, Bob Burden and Flaming Carrot. And I love Steve Purcell and Sam and Max. So I love these comics. You know what else I love? I love you folks watching and supporting this channel. I know I haven't been putting out as many videos lately. Kidney stone problems, global pandemics, all kinds of stuff going on. But you know what? I'm back in the saddle. I'm coming back for some live streaming, like I said, this week. I'm also going to be uh, uh, shooting more videos. I'm going to be pulling out back issues and graphic novels. I'm going to be going deep into the good stuff. Mainstream be damned. I'm going into the indie and the underground stuff that I love, as well as the mainstream stuff by um, awesome creators that you might know, you might not, you might want to know. So stick around. Stay with Comic Book News. Thank you for supporting this channel and sticking around with me. I love all you folks uh, for watching and for, for sharing this joy of comics with me. Man, I hope to see you soon. Um, we'll see you when? Next time. Make sure to stick around tomorrow for uh, the, uh, a retailer live stream focused on back issues and uh, the Key Collector Comics app. Is it ruining comics? Find out in the live stream. Thanks for watching.